Today's reading is from our church's Covenant of Right Relations, formally adopted in 2019. Unitarian Universalism is a covenantal religion. This covenant of right relationship expresses the aspirations we have for ourselves and each other about how we want to be in community together. We believe the way we treat each other expresses who and what we are as a congregation. Each of us is responsible for supporting ourselves and one another and making good faith efforts to abide by this covenant. This is an abridged version of our covenant of right relations. As part of the Columbine Unitarian Universalist Church community, I aspire to speak and act with kindness, care, acceptance, and open mind. Speak and listen with honesty, remembering that someone else's truth may differ from my own. Assume positive intent, and if I am confused about that intent, ask. Listen deeply and seek to understand perspectives uh, different from my own. When in disagreement, speak directly and privately with those involved in an effort to resolve differences. Speak kindly of others, including those with whom I may disagree. Maintain boundaries and articulate them as necessary. Seek support from the shared ministry team if efforts, if efforts to resolve a dispute are unsuccessful. None of us is perfect. Therefore, do not expect perfection from others or from myself. Forgive others and compassionately invite them back into covenant when it is broken. Forgive myself if I break covenant and redouble my efforts to right relationships. Now everybody's so quiet today. <laughs> Thank you, Rocky and Steve, for reading our Covenant of Right Relations. I, I think we forget we have it sometimes. So as you may have read in our blurb this week, covenant is Latin for come together. It means a solemn agreement or a promise from the heart regarding a course of action between parties. Now, I don't know if HOA covenants are quite promises from the heart, <laughs> but here at Columbine and UU churches the world over, we make covenants with each other as promises from the heart. The covenant of right relations that Rocky and Steve just read was crafted by the membership of this church as a visionary work of aspiration and a practical container for our expectations of how we treat each other. What we heard today in our reading was a short vision, version of our covenant of right relations because having our worship associates read the unabridged version, seven pages of small print, would have been out of covenant. <laughs> I don't know what covenant that is, but you'd be mad at all of us right now. The arc of worship would have been disrupted. <laughs> but for those of you who are, who are interested in reviewing the full covenant, I printed five of them up and put them on the table in the vestibule, and it's also posted on our website. So like most UU churches, Columbine worked together to create our covenant of right relations, and it was democratically voted on and formally adopted by the members of this church a few years ago. Now this coming year, we're going to be working to update it as we are a living tradition. That means that as UUs, we keep on learning and growing in our spiritual understanding and also in our methodology, how we function together. We build the plane as it's flying here, as is our UU tradition, and we keep learning and growing. We make 
and break and remake our covenants all the darn time. And that's actually where the best work gets done, in the making and breaking and remaking of our promises to each other. And just like Melanie pointed out today with bear and beaver and who's the other one? Moose? That after they lived into their covenant, life still wasn't perfect. It was still difficult, but at least they were all on the same page. So even the process of creating our documents, like our covenant of right relations, is an expression of our UU values. Because the easiest way to write something would be to give it to the best writer in the church and say, hey, Rocky, you're a good writer. Why don't you make us a covenant? And that's kind of how secular organizations work. They hire the best and the brightest, and then they go with that. But that's not how we roll as Unitarian Universalists. And it's worth that extra effort to collaborate because we're committed to living into our eight principles and our shared values in everything we do. And our fifth principle articulates our commitment to the democratic process. We, decide, we decided everything, we decide everything democratically. And I've noticed that in the day-to-day -day life of this church, we actually tend to run on consensus, which is a very pure form of democracy in our various leadership teams, including the board. For the most part around here, voting is only something we use as a last resort. And this is a thing of beauty because it means we really do want to find solutions that address everyone's concerns. But this requires some countercultural behaviors. It requires that we trust the process and each other. It requires that we don't dig our heels in and that we examine our own ulterior motives, that we're willing and that we are willing to truly listen to each other. Now these are values I personally hold deeply and they first became important to me nearly 30 years ago when I lived in an egalitarian community on a farm in Virginia. All the members of the community were also co-owners of the farm and we made all decisions by consensus. We used a specific structure called formal consensus, capital F, capital C, that was created by a man named C.T. Butler in the early 80s. C.T., which stands for Cosmic Trucker, <laughs> and he just emailed me back the other day for the first time in 20 years, so that was cool. Um, he was the founder of Food Not Bombs in 1980, and he wrote a book called On Conflict and Consensus. Now, CT's radical method methodology for governance was adopted by many intentional communities, and I became a formal consensus facilitator and worked to spread formal consensus to eco-villages and communities in Ireland and Wales. But here's what I notice now about this history of mine. Formal consensus gave me a structure to use for resolving conflicts in all areas of my life, in my personal relationships with my children and here in community with you all. And it has become second nature. It's a process that shares a lot of common threads with our UU culture of creating covenants because both formal consensus and our covenants are based on agreements that are freely entered into. Formal consensus doesn't use the word covenant, but ultimately it asks people to co-create a vision for an inclusive and mutually empowering process that honors each person's sacred truth. So like the consensus model, our covenants are based on shared values and a common vision, rather than legislating what people can or cannot do. Consensus is, approached, is an approach to decision making that is similar to what we do here. And it gets messy sometimes because people are always peopling. <laughs> we don't come to the table with purely rational ideas and opinions. We come with our childhood wounds and our religious trauma and the limitations of our knowledge, which sometimes we're not aware of. So often when one of us has a strong opinion about the budget or about worship or about each other, there's a backstory. And we can't really legislate, no subtexts allowed. Our covenants don't read, no childhood wounds, no subconscious motivations. Instead, 
They guide us to considering our motivations and being aware of our own human limitations and reactions. Each of us, each of our approaches to problem solving are many and varied and complex, as is each person. And we are not immune to making a decision about something like how the church spends money that's not really about how our parents spent money or some other historical situation or fear that drives us to do what we do. Our, but our covenants are designed for imperfect people doing imperfect decision making because like everything in life, we will make mistakes and then here we will be called to repair and amend them. And this is why our covenant of right relations is a living covenant and it's why it is aspirational. It's a container that holds us and it's also a tool for culture change. So just like my years of formal consensus changed my deepest way of seeing the world, so do our UU covenants affect how we relate to each other and the world around us. We really should send our Columbine covenant of right relations to the United Nations, just my opinion, and then to Congress, and then to the Douglas County School Board. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Our covenant of right relations is a shared vision of something we believe is possible, and it's a radical methodology because it isn't hierarchical, it isn't enforced with weapons or fear or even legal consequences. It is an egalitarian agreement between two parties or us all, each to each other, and it is entered into freely and voluntarily. By agreeing to covenant with other members of our church, we enter into a relationship that articulates our shared values. And because our covenants are stated in the positive, they are a shared vision, a dream of a new world. And this is different from laws. Laws generally say you can't do something. They say, don't litter, don't steal, don't kill, and that's great, but it's a low bar. <laughs> When we consider what is actually possible, our covenant creates a vision of kindness. Some people, even some scientists, believe that these shared imaginings actually help to create reality. So instead of making rules that say what not to do, Unitarian Universalists make promises based on shared values, and there is power in our collaboration to co-create this dream of a new world. Our covenants give us a path to doing the day-to-day -day work of living into our eighth principles, which I would encourage you to just look over and think about how they create a vision. And this faith community gives us a place to start. Here's where we learn to maintain relationships with each other, and it is no small task. Our society didn't train us up to work through disagreements peacefully. Our culture does not promote the ability to give and take, to value each other's inherent worth and dignity, and to be generous of heart, or to set boundaries. Our patriarchal society has trained us to be competitive, perfectionist, and to try and make ourselves look good in front of others. Often we don't just disagree, we villainize the other person for not sharing our point of view. And our mainstream culture does not value attentive listening. It's not based on centering the voices of young people, older people, people with disabilities or neurodiversity, people of color, or people who don't speak fluent English. Our laws, either inadvertently or purposefully, consciously or unconsciously, create more marginalization, often, not always. And that's why we envision something different here. Our UU covenants are a conscious attempt to include everyone, to encourage us to listen and to take a breath before reacting. We are working to create a culture where we respect one another and give each other the benefit of the doubt. But our covenants are only as effective as we let them be. We can put them on the Google Drive for the church and forget about them, or we can use them as living documents. They are our container, our structure, and we need that. We must be mindful that we don't use them as weapons of righteousness or superiority, kind of like how people misuse scripture. 
and we don't worship our covenants because we know they're not perfect. We can look back at old ones and say, oh, we're glad we improved that. Instead, we continually re-examine them and refine them. We use them for reference and for ongoing conversation. And sometimes when someone is harming others or disrupting our democratic system, our covenants serve as our guides for self-governance. As with all things, they can be used for good or evil. If I was to carry a copy of our covenant of right relations in my pocket and scan it whenever somebody spoke loudly or interrupted someone else and then whipped it out and said, you didn't make a clear request in a timely manner. <laughs> that would be a misuse of our covenants. <laughs> we are not tasked with being the covenant police, but we, they can help us to speak up when we witness hurt or harm. They can help us find the courage to speak up and disrupt harmful behaviors. They serve to help us get on the same page when making decisions together, and they can teach us how to navigate tricky and emotional situations and compassionately stand up for ourselves or each other. Our covenant of right relations supports our exploration of how we approach conflict, especially when we're tempted to look the other way, when we're kind of scared to speak up and rock the boat. They remind us that we are doing important work together. Alone, we can work on ourselves, and we can observe our own processes, and we can go to therapy, and we can strive to be better people, and that's all good. But together, in a community of people who think differently than we do, people with different experiences and identities and cultures, in community is where we have the opportunity to accelerate our spiritual development. We challenge each other. We see ourselves in the mirror of each other. In other words, we can't know as fully who we are unless we are in community with others. Together, we build our ability to tolerate emotional pain and embarrassment and vulnerability. And it really does get easier with practice. When I think about myself before I was a UU, before seminary and now, I, I can personally say that doing this painful, embarrassing, vulnerable, difficult work, having that courage, it really does get easier. And it's still hard, but it's a commitment that we share. When you tool, use these tools and this community to cultivate your courage and your tolerance for awkwardness, it feels so good. It's worth it. It frees us to live more full, fully into who we are and to share our gifts with others. Without my UU community the last 20 years, I would have not learned how to tolerate being seen, taking risks, and forgiving myself when I make mistakes, which are now usually public. <laughs> But it's my UU faith community that inspired me to have the courage to do some very hard things that led me to this moment, even when I was low on confidence or struggling. Our UU faith calls us to grow. It calls us to tolerate the scary and uncomfortable feelings that accompany taking risks, to cultivate the courage to show up again and again, and to take those little tentative steps into new versions of ourselves. To learn at 91 years old to be a worship associate, for example. <laughs> to take on serving on the board for the first time. To get up in front of people and play an instrument or sing. It even takes courage to come to a dismantling racism meeting and to share vulnerable stories of times that we found racism in our own actions or words. It takes courage to walk in this door and show up here and be imperfect in the presence of others. But it is essential to our human experience and to growing our souls. And our covenants are the containers, the guides, the instructions we create for ourselves in building beloved community. May we read our covenants and live into their promises. May we revise our covenants knowing that this is how we become, each of us, a part of the living tradition. 
May we dream together our vision of a place that truly welcomes diversity. May we be brave and may be, we be willing to be vulnerable and uncomfortable and to say hard things. May we give each other grace, but also firm boundaries. And may our covenants support and sustain our good work and the work of this church. Amen.